Although Stellar Blade may not be as unforgiving as some of its inspirations, these tips could save you from a tricky encounter. Here are 13 things I wish I knew before starting Stellar Blade. Before you even begin Stellar Blade, check the settings. One particular option lets you auto pick up items. We recommend turning that on, otherwise every time you open a chest or defeat a boss, you'll need to mash R2 to pick everything up. You can also set the length of Eve's ponytail if you're into that sort of thing. As you kill enemies and inspect bodies, you'll get experience which can be used to unlock new skills at camps. There are five skill trees in total, but for the first few hours you'll only have access to three, combat, survival, and beta skills. We recommend investing heavily in the combat and survival skill trees early on because these unlock new combos, abilities, and mechanics that are crucial in combat. A few you should unlock right away are Ambush, which lets you stealth kill enemies, Chain Charge, which lets you attack a nearby enemy after a stealth kill. Focus Boost, which makes it easier to perfect parry. Reflex Boost, which makes it easier to perfect dodge. And Double Dodge, which lets you dodge a second time. During combat, enemies will occasionally glow specific colors. When they do, you need to respond in a specific way, whether that means blocking, dodging, dodging forward, or dodging backwards. Red means perfect block, yellow means dodge any direction, blue means dodge forward, and purple means dodge backwards. Early on, Stellar Blade won't throw all these mechanics at you at once, but by the end you'll need to respond correctly and quickly so it's good to get some practice in. Once you've completed the tutorial, a little drone with a scanner function will follow you around. By pressing the touchpad, it highlights points of interest, enemies, collectibles, scavenger robots, and environmental hazards. You should scan constantly. There are so many important items and upgrades that are easy to miss if you aren't thorough, such as fallen angels who will increase your health capacity and scavenger bots that drop upgrade parts. Eventually, you'll even be able to upgrade your drone. Given how important some of Stellar Blade's loot is, we recommend upgrading its scanning and hacking capabilities ASAP to save you time backtracking and searching for specific items. Arguably one of the most useful combat abilities is Rush. By holding triangle, this allows you to dash to an enemy and hit them with a heavy attack. This is particularly useful for closing the distance on quick enemies or bosses that are trying to make some space. You can even upgrade the distance of this dash in the attack skill tree, just keep in mind that this skill does have a short cooldown. At least once you'll encounter a time when you said, I definitely parried that, only to learn that you were in the combo ender animation. Anytime Eve is in the middle of a normal attack string, she can dodge or parry at any time, making your defense easy to access. But as soon as you start the last attack of a combo, it locks you in, committing you to that attack, making you extremely vulnerable. For the longest attack string, which has great defensive utility, use triangle, square, triangle, square without hitting the last triangle input to have a constant attack while still being able to defend yourself. Fast travel is a bit weird in Stellar Blade. As you explore each region, you'll come across payphones, ancient real world relics that some players may recognize, which can be used to travel to other discovered payphones in that region. Make sure to interact with them whenever you find them in order to activate them. Meanwhile, some camps have payphones and others don't, so you can't fast travel to and from every single camp you've found. However, you cannot travel to a payphone in a different region than your current one. In order to travel to another region, you need to talk to Adam, physically leave the area, or using a payphone travel to an exit symbol which will take you to an adjacent region. However, it will just spit you out at the entrance of said region. The best way to fast travel back to the hub area is by completing side quests. Upon completion, most will give you the option to fast travel directly to the quest giver. Death isn't always the end for Eve. Throughout your journey, you can find and purchase pumps which essentially let you revive Eve with full health once per life. Most vending machines sell these and you're bound to find a few if you're diligently scanning your environment. They are tough to find early on and can be a bit expensive, but they can be incredibly useful when fighting some of the game's tougher bosses.
Stellar Blade has two types of side quests, ones that are designated as exclamation points on the map and ones that can be picked up from a request board. We recommend doing as many exclamation point side quests as possible because these typically have better rewards and occasionally offer some unique items and unlocks. And apart from the rewards, most of these quests revolve around important characters in the hub world and helping them can marginally affect the world and story. For example, Digger, the friendly scavenger robot you find in the wasteland has a side Side quest that culminates with a little guy setting up shop in the hub world. Another side quest unlocks a barber shop that lets you color and cut Eve's hair. On the other hand, the request board missions are pretty simple and clearly state the rewards. Speaking of Digger, the little robot is more than a cunning sales bot. You can exchange two broken weapon cores with him to receive a brand new one, which can be used to strengthen Eve's blade. To be honest, if you do the side quests, you should be able to find enough weapon cores to max out Eve's blade anyway, but this can be helpful if you're having trouble with certain enemies or bosses. Some merchants have an affinity level which can be increased by buying items from them. As you level up their affinity, they will increase their stock and give you some special missions. For example, Kaya, who owns Sister's Junk, sends you on a quest to find her sister. Increasing affinity is pretty easy to do, and if you want to unlock some cosmetics, we recommend spending most of your money at these shops. You'll hit a point in the story where Adam will tell you to tie up any loose ends in Zion because you may not be able to return for a while. What he should have said is that you won't be able to return at all. So if you're the completionist type, you should take his suggestion to heart. I half ignored it thinking I'd be able to go back after I rolled credits, but sadly that is not the case. There's also only one save slot per save file, so you can't hard save at this point and reload it later. Number 13, Spoiler Mode. About halfway through the game, you'll unlock a somewhat spoilery special ability. If you'd rather leave it as a surprise, then click out now. Minor spoilers in three, two, one. After you've defeated Corrupted Tacky, you'll unlock Tacky Mode. This makes you invulnerable for a short period of time as Eve wallops on anyone and anything around her. It's a great offensive ability, but you can also save it for when you're in a pinch since it makes Eve invulnerable for a short period of time. There's 13 tips that should give you an edge in Stellar Blade. If there's any more tips you found, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.